welcome. Thank you. And thank you very much, Lonnie, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you today and look forward to our chat. Well, you know, thank you. I, you know, um, you, so, so you said you started in training in, in 2006 and uh, obviously, and then, and then continued training and, and went to, you know, the Tepper School of Business, which is for people who are outside of Pittsburgh, that's, it, it's, it's, you know, uh, always one of the top ranked business schools in, in the country. Um, and uh, so through your, your upbringing and, and, and decisions that you had to make to get into, you know, some field, um, obviously you, you probably had a lot of opportunities. What made you decide first medicine and then getting this interest that you have now in, um, in, in business and entrepreneurship? Sure. Yeah, so with the medicine side of things, um, science really truly was one of the, the loves of my life from a very early age. Um, the, the STEM, so to speak, things have always come a little bit easier to, to me more so than the humanities and, and that end of the spectrum. So I've always had a love of science. Um, I was fortunate enough to have two amazing parents that had a philanthropic spirit um, and I was able to see from their example the love of helping others. And so the combination of those two, um, because they really did instill that into me as well, and the combination of those two, you know, led me down towards the path of medicine. Uh, the honest truth is, I, for many of my years, in my early formative years, I was trying to follow in the footsteps of my dad. My dad was an attorney for many years. And I think a lot of children like to follow in the footsteps of, of their parents. And, and I really did. I, and I still, to this day, I still am in wild by the legal profession. I think it's an amazing field. And in another lifetime, I, I might have gone down that pathway. But I think my dad had the, the foresight to see what was coming in terms of the job market for the law field and knowing the challenges that a lot of uh, young lawyers are facing right now. And, and I think he gently steered me to say, maybe think about something else. He, he was very good about not pushing in any which way. But said, at least look, let's see what else is out there. You know, you are, you do have the science mind, you have this tinkering mind. I always loved building model cars, always was doing things with my hands and, and that kind of thing. And he said, Let, let's at least explore that. And I was uh, fortunate enough to live next door to uh, Nick Tranto, who is a graduate of Youngstown State University and an unofficial recruiter for Youngstown State University. He's very proud of his, uh, of his uh, school. And so he had told me, you know, in like early high school, he said, Alex, he said, look at this, this program that Youngstown State has. They have this combined BSMD program. So you're able to get yeah. your bachelor's degree in science as well as your MD degree in an accelerated six-year program. Wow. And that sounded really exciting to me. Uh, I really liked the idea of getting out there, getting done. I kind of had enough of school. I said, let's, let's look at a way to accelerate things and get out there and start helping people. Yeah. And yeah. so I looked at that program and instantly fell in love with it. I said, this is amazing. Um, I really want to do this. And the idea of, of transitioning from away from law to medicine at that point was a little scary, I, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. And in retrospect, did the 18 year old Alex really know what he wanted to do with his life? Maybe not, but thank God I had <laughs> some great people around me uh, gently nudging me towards maybe something else. I, I think they, they knew what they were doing when they, they nudged me that way, and thank God they did. Um, and so that was, that was the start of, of my medical career. And as I was going through medicine, you know, really, really kind of solidified my choice for me that I had made the right choice. Um, mm -hmm. And really loved a lot of things about medicine. I was in my third year of medical school and I still hadn't found the right fit though. Um, mm -hmm. I had done some internal medicine rotations, some surgical rotations, and there were parts of each of those that I loved, um, but neither one was a quite right fit. And some other fields of medicine were definite no's. And I went to one of my advisors in, in mid third year. And I said, you know, these are the things I've loved so far. This is what I didn't like, but I'm really struggling to find what the right fit for me is. And again, I was blessed to have an, an advisor that uh, guided me in the right way and said, you know, Alex, you really need to look at ophthalmology. And um, I was fortunate enough to have a good family friend who was an ophthalmologist in Cleveland, Ohio, which I was living in Akron at the time. And again, one more fortuitous thing where I just had the, the right uh, connection and I called him up and his, uh, his name is Augie Kellis. He's still a practicing ophthalmologist in Cleveland. I said, Augie, I said, you know, can I spend a week with you? Can, can I just have a chance to see what ophthalmology is all about? Because the way my medical was set up, I wouldn't have medical school was set up. I wouldn't have a chance to do that uh, for right. quite some time. 
and he was fortunate. He was uh, nice enough to say, yeah, come on, spend a week with him. So I spent a week with him and he was a great salesman. Uh, he uh, really sold me on the field of ophthalmology and, and he let me even scrub into the operating room with him. And as a third year med student, like, this is amazing. I'm in the wow, operating room great. watching this guy restore somebody's eyesight. And, and that mm. was just, it just sold me. I said, right there, I said, this is amazing. Um, and, you know, it, it is a little bit cliche to say that restoring somebody's eyesight is, is amazing, but it, it is. I mean, it's, oh, it's no the number two it, yeah. fear of, of people. It's been well established yeah. in lots of studies that second to death, fear, fear of uh, blindness. And so yeah. to be fortunate enough to be in a field where I actually truly can restore people's eyesight, that I feel so blessed to be able to do that. And yeah, so, it, it, that, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, and 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 I can say that you know your your patients, you know, often ref, you know uh, let us know how much they appreciate the care that you provide. Obviously, you you know you've helped a lot of people, and that must feel really, really good. It, it really does. It really does. It's it, there is no feeling quite like that. There, there truly isn't. Um, yeah, and and you're working in the back of the eye, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy. These are blinding conditions. Um, absolutely. So, um, so tell us about some of the things that that are happening clinically that um, that you feel will be beneficial to your patients. That you're looking, that you're excited about. Maybe that we're starting to see in in some of the the research that's happening. That. Uh, and, and even some of the things that you get to review uh, as, uh, as your, your role uh, in UPMC Enterprises that, that maybe get you excited about the future for, for people with um, vision loss. As you reference, I, I do work in the back of the eye. Um, and that's the, the field of ophthalmology that, that got me the most excited during my training. Um, as I was going through my ophthalmology training, recognized that the, that was the right place for me. There's a lot of advances we've made in anterior segment disease and ophthalmology, and we have conquered a lot of those diseases, quite frankly. And there's still a lot of challenges uh, left to be met in the back of the eye. There's a lot of vitriol diseases that are still quite blinding and still quite devastating for quite a few folks. And so that was the, the part of medicine and ophthalmology specifically that uh, excited me the most and really attracted me to that field of medicine. We have uh, the highest of highs in that field sometimes. Uh, we're able to bring people back from the brink of blindness, but unfortunately we still have some very low uh, points and places where we still lose. And so it is a challenging area that still needs a lot of uh, good scientists. We need a lot of good investments and we need a, a lot of good work uh, to be done in that area. And I'm fortunate enough to be at the intersection of a lot of those things with my work at uh, UPMC Enterprises. As you referenced there, I do get to see a lot of things come across my desk there, uh, opportunities for investment uh, through UPMC Enterprises that are focused on a lot of vitreoidal diseases. Um, there are some advances that have already happened right here at Pitt. Um, my colleague, uh, Yossi Martel, is part of the uh, Prima Bionic, Bionic Vision System study that's going on at UPMC. Uh, we're using basically an artificial retina to help treat age-related macular degeneration. And one, we're fortunate enough to be one of the uh, few sites here in the United States doing that. Uh, so that's a great thing. We have uh, things like uh, gene therapy that are happening in the, on the research side of things. Uh, we have Leah Byrne, who's an amazing researcher in our department, uh, that's helping um, advance that field. Gene therapy is in its infancy in ophthalmology and in its infancy in medicine, quite frankly. Uh, and it has a lot of room for improvement. And she's working diligently to help improve that and, and allow us to have better gene therapies for ophthalmology. And so those are really the, the things that I see as most exciting about ophthalmology in the next few years is the ability to not just repair the damage that's, that's there and try to stop the damage, but actually reverse things and actually bring back vision cells and bring back retina cells and bring back ganglion cells of the optic, of, of the optic nerve. These are the things that I, I see happening in, at the research level, um, starting to, to come into the clinic side of things. We're still a few years away from FDA approval on a lot of these, but it's exciting to see where we're, where we're going. Another company yeah. that's an exciting one is uh, that just had in July recent results was j -Site, And they're actually, uh, it's a cellular therapy where they're actually able to re replace RPE cells, the retinal pigment epithelial cells, which is a crucial wow. part of the age-related macular degeneration cascade. And they're actually now having some wonderful results in their 2B, phase 2B study. Uh, wow! We'll be able to uh, replace that, and so it's advances like that that give me great hope for our field and and what's going to be there ten years from now. It's it's exciting to think about. 
Well, that's thank you for sharing that. I think I think that's something that um, many of our uh, of uh, of our patients will be really grateful for. Now, in in looking at your you know young career, I I have to say, <laughs> you're, you know, I, oh, relative, we right? Talking, well, as we were talking about kids and and you have a young family, I, I mine aren't so young anymore. But um, but as you're looking at the things you've already accomplished, and it's been a lot, and, you know, congratulations for all that. If you were to identify, you know, uh, something that you're most proud of that you've that you've already you know been able to accomplish that's that, that you feel has made an impact, let tell us what that is. Yeah, to do that, I, I have to tell a little story. I, I like telling stories. And so to, to really give you that answer, I got to tell a little story first. And um, it was, you know, 2005, it was uh, to 2003, and interviewing for fellowships for vitro retinal disease. And so uh, for those that may be not familiar with it, you apply to multiple places when you want to get a fellowship in a specific area of medicine. And then those people that like your application then I invite you down to come for an interview and you go on as many interviews as you can. And then you uh, submit a list to do what they call the match. And they try to match you up with the best place for you and for them to do your training. And I was fortunate enough to get an interview with a uh, retina specialist of Alabama in Birmingham, Alabama, led by uh, Bob Morris. And I got there for the interview and, and was right away very impressed with everything that I saw there and every person I met. But the thing that still sticks with me to this day is when I was sitting down with Dr. Morris himself, he said, you know, here, and I'm paraphrasing, but I think the message can be translated. He's, he said, here at Retina Specialist of Alabama, we can't always promise cure, um, but we can promise and provide compassion. And that just spoke volumes to me about him as a person, him as a physician, and about how he practiced medicine. And fast forward a few more months. I was fortunate enough that uh, he and his partner, Doug Witherspoon, wanted me, and I got to train there uh, for my vitriol surgery fellowship, and I, I can't be more thankful to the support that they provided me, the education they provided me, and I got to see what Bob said firsthand. I got to see that he truly did. This wasn't just a lie they gave their applicants. They truly did have the utmost compassion and care for their patients in addition to their amazing skill set and their amazing surgical skill set. And that was something that I said, I want to emulate that for the rest of my career. And, and that's what I'm most proud about. I, I think that is something that I have been able to accomplish is that despite this being a difficult field, despite having a lot of challenges in treating a lot of these difficult diseases, no matter what, every patient that walks through my door, I try to treat with the utmost compassion and care that I can and I think I've had feedback from patients that, that support that, that I have been able to do that. And that, quite honestly, is what I'm most proud of. Of everything else that I've done, that is what I'm most proud of. No, we hear the same feedback. So, you know, that's, that's, that's wonderful to hear that that's really your, your proudest accomplishment. So now Pittsburgh is going through a lot right now, you know, in terms of growth and in, in particularly in ophthalmology and, and, um, and you know, as you know, in the department, there's a lot of things happening. Um, as it relates to some of the things that you're involved with, uh, you know, both within the department and then also on the innovation side, um, what are, you know, what really can you share with people that would be um, good to know about the future here uh, and what we're doing here in Pittsburgh? Yeah, um, so on the ophthalmology side of things, um, obviously we're very, very fortunate to have Dr. Jose Sahel uh, leading our team. Um, literally world-renowned experts uh, in many fields of, um, I'm biased a little bit, but he's, he's a retina specialist, so that makes me happy that he's leading our team. Um, but in all seriousness, he is, he's world-renowned in his expertise, both on the scientific side of things, as well as on the entrepreneurship side of things. And he is a big part of why I have my role at Enterprises. If, if it wasn't for his uh, strong support of me taking on that role there, I, I don't think I would have that opportunity. And so I, I, I'm very thankful to him that he recognized in me that I had uh, the skill set to, to bridge both sides, to be able to say, you know, here's a, a device or here's a therapeutic, here's a medicine that is potential. And 
does it fill an unmet clinical need? And, and if so, can, can enterprises, um, can we profit off that? Can we, can we translate that into something that then allows us to feed back into the system and provide more care for patients and do all the wonderful things that UPMC does? And so again, I'm, I'm thankful to, to Dr. Sell for allowing me to do that. And then on the UPMC Enterprises side, I, I'm fortunate enough to be um, under the leadership of Tal Heppenstahl, who is the president of UPMC Enterprises, as well as the treasurer of all of UPMC. Uh, and he was fortunate enough to, to see in me that, that promise as well. That's really how that opportunity came about was, he is also a Carnegie Mellon graduate and there's an alumni group that we're both a part of and we met through that. And, he uh, you know, saw me an opportunity that, to say, you know, Alex, I think this is something that the translational science department of enterprises could really benefit from your expertise. And mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate that he saw that promise in me as well. And, and now we're uh, under the leadership of that team of Jean, Jean Kunicelli. And I've learned so much from her uh, about entrepreneurship and about uh, the venture capital world it's been invaluable and, and I can't thank her enough for the opportunity that she's given me to be part of that team because the work we're doing there is, is so amazing. It is such an exciting time uh, in the enterprises family. Um, UPMC parent uh, just recently announced a uh, $1 billion commitment to UPMC enterprises because wow. they recognized what we did with the initial outlay of funds they gave us in 2017 They've seen the, the amazing work that we've done to date and they recognize that and they said, we want to continue this. We want to keep it going. And so mm -hmm. they now committed up to a total of $1 billion to enterprises to, con to continue our mission. And that, that's an ex exciting, amazing opportunity, right? To be able to say, yeah. here is this almost limitless funds, quite honestly, to say, let's find that good science out there. Let's turn it into medicine. Let's help people. And that's such an amazing opportunity to be part of that team. Wow. On the ophthalmology side of things, I get to help people, you know, one on one. I, I can help that each individual person one at a time, and there's a limit to that, right? But when you're on the entrepreneurship side of it, and you're able to translate something from an idea in a scientist's head to an FDA-approved product because of your investment, you're helping thousands, if not millions, of people. And the opportunity to be able to help people in that way, it's just it's just an amazing thing. I'm so excited to be a part of that, and so. It, this is Pittsburgh's got this little microcosm of a VC world growing here, and that's a really cool thing. Um, we're not the we're not the uh, Silicon Valley, and I'm proud to say we're not. Um, we don't have the the fallback the uh, the uh, downsides that come with that big of an environment. We're mm -hmm. still in our infancy here, and, and that's a really cool thing to be at the ground floor of that. Well, I I think you're right, and I and I I don't think we're Silicon Valley either, but I do think that you know, um, particularly in vision, uh, I think people will uh, continue to see very good things coming out in Pittsburgh, and and I'm so happy that you're part of that and that you're um, helping the the you know contribute to that um, with your expertise, and and it sounds like just a great fit, um, and and obviously we feel you're a great fit with uh, with everybody here, so. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for spending some time today and, and letting people get to hear a little bit about what you're doing, you know, outside the clinic, but also, um, you know, your passion for what you're doing and, and caring for patients, which we all know. So uh, thank you and, and um, uh, have a wonderful day. And you as well. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Again, I thank you for the opportunity to, to tell my story a little bit and it's a wonderful thing here. Okay. You take care. Thank you very much.